Welcome to another episode of FML and today I'm going over what I just got and why I did a clutch job on a Volkswagen. I didn't do it because I was bored. I did it for this. So here you have it, a 96 Volvo Turbo Wagon and it's actually in pretty good shape. Uh, we have minimal rust on it, interior is pretty good. Uh, it needs some uh, work on the motor situation and drivability but uh, I've definitely dealt with worse. And considering I got it for free, with the exception of a day's worth of work, I think I did pretty good. So let's get in it and take a closer look here. So let's take a peek at the interior. We have leather seats with a little slight hole. We don't want to know how that got there. Everything looks to be in decent order for a pretty old station wagon. The one thing that this doesn't have No third row seating. I think we can bolt another set in there if I find one at the junkyard, so fingers crossed for that. Dad tested, baby approved. So here we have a five cylinder turbo and I don't know, I think it's a 2.3. I really don't know a whole lot about this. I'm gonna be real honest with you. We got some leakage going on here. We have a nice little aftermarket tube. That's all I gotta say about that. I don't really know any more about this. Um, it does run. So let's see how it starts. All right, let's start her up. Now, I had moved it. Kind of starts right up. We have a couple lights on, service, coolant level, I'm guessing, washer fluid, nobody cares about that. But I did notice that it starts up, it'll idle fine, and then let's see if it'll do it here. But it'll almost want to die, and then once it warms up, it's good again. So let's see if it does it. So it must only do it for a very minimal amount when you first start it, because it did it when I went to go move the car for this recording. But yeah, it'll almost die and then rev way back up to compensate for the drop in RPM. So um, yeah, I have no idea what that's about. Um, if anybody else knows, comment below, give me some direction here, because I'm used to working on Mercedes and BMWs and Hondas, so, yeah. We got, we had an inspector to help me look at stuff wrong with the car, but here we can see mud flap flapping around this lug nut bolt if you will is out more than the others I don't know what that's about as my inspector has pointed out we are missing our wipers for the headlights on this side all my lug nuts are the same distance of out what else is wrong what else is wrong with the car? Over here? Another headlight wiper broken off, missing. This was parked under some pine trees. Quite a bit of pine tree going on here. We had a pine cone hitching a ride. We got tree sap all over it. As for rust, we got spot here that ain't too bad underneath looks pretty solid you know actually I think the only real rust spots are on the fenders maybe I can get lucky and find a white fender oh we got a little bit right here it looks like so here it is running it actually runs pretty smooth once it warms up um, doesn't really vibrate at all. 
We could probably work on checking the coolant. I don't know. Be nice if the AC worked. I'm not really gonna be dumping a lot of money into this thing. I'm not really sure why I got it. I don't need another car. I have too many projects as it is. But I can't pass up a free station wagon. Let's go take it for a ride. As you can see with my inspection services, I can tell that this one does have headlight wipers and they will be broken off by the time I am done. Watch. Ah, stop it. <laughs> All right, here we go, driving the station wagon. Uh, it goes in the gear and we also have three kids in here. So we're just going around the trailer park for now. There's something definitely wrong with the steering rack. It's real hard going straight. I don't know if that's a Volvo thing or what, but uh, that's definitely an issue because now it's easy to turn, gets into a certain spot, and then it's easy, hard, easy, hard, so the rack might be bad in this. Looks like the exhaust is leaking right after the cat, and it's, uh, it's pretty loud. Let's see if it hits boost. Uh, it's not very exciting. And we're almost out of gas, so I'm gonna have to go take a trip for that. Also, it does decent off-roading in the crater system that we have here in the trailer court. <laughs> Windshield's cracked. Why wouldn't it be? What kind of car would I have without a cracked windshield? I think everything had a cracked windshield when I bought it and I've replaced quite a few of them. If you want to see the last one that I replaced, check out my video on the B12 BMW and how I messed that up. Hopefully I won't do that on this. We gotta find a good windshield first. So I'm not buying a brand new one. All right, now that we got rid of the kids, we're gonna go to the gas station and uh, let's get some gas in there and get this thing up to speed. See if it gets past third gear, or second gear. See if it gets past second gear. All right, now that we're getting on the main road, let's get on it and see what happens. That was a little uneventful. I feel like it could be a little quicker, but I don't know, maybe I'm missing out on something here. Let's go get some gas and maybe maybe some fresh fuel will help things out a little bit here. I don't know how long it's sat. There's quite a few pine trees. Uh, there's quite a few pine needles on the car. So um, there are no there are no trees on this car. Not yet. While we're cruising, don't forget to check out the music in today's video. Uh, don't forget to check out the music and all my videos, they're all different. Help an, help an artist get uh, recognized, maybe you'll find something you like. All right, here we go, we're going on to a higher speed road here. Florida! I have it floored and it shifts at 4,500. So that's, that's interesting. Uh, funny story, guys. I was looking at the temperature gauge, thinking it was my boost gauge, and wondering why it wasn't really moving when I floored it. The, the boost gauge is on the top, not, not to the side. It moves. It works. Hey, you guys, I just noticed something. There's a sport button on the sport wagon. Let's see if it does anything for us. Casually stepping on the accelerator does not show any changes. Let's get some gas. All right, we're gonna take off in sport mode. Scratch that, let me explain the tire situation. We, we filled it up with gas, and then I went to go check the tire pressure because I had a tire that looked like low. So the front passenger side tire was at 41 PSI. The back passenger side one was at like 26 PSI. The front driver side tire was at I want to go with 22 PSI. And then the back one was at 16, which is the one that caught my eye. So now that we all have matching tire pressure, let's see how this baby goes. We also have it sport mode. Sorry about the microphone, guys. I'm going to 
gonna get a different one. So it definitely felt quicker. It does drive a little more uh, level. It seemed kind of squirmy before, which you have a little tire that'll happen. The shift points actually uh, went past 4,500 this time when I had it floored, so there's that. It's kind of crazy how this, like, guessing 2.3 liter motor is only turbocharged motor and it's not doesn't feel that crazy but the 1.5 liter in my Civic just pulls it just rips so and that's a four cylinder this is five we have an extra cylinder and make sure there's nobody in my blind spot there are a lot of rattles going on in this thing right now I don't know if the microphone's picking it up I know I can see that it's drooping down into the camera lens again. Yeah, we definitely need a new mic. It's hard to believe that the free car is the one that doesn't shake when it's driving. It rattles the most, but it doesn't shake. That drone from the exhaust is crazy, guys. I don't know if this mic's picking it up. But it's insane in here. It is just echoing off of everything. And now that I'm talking and looked up, I noticed that this whole interior is black, except for the headliner. I'll, uh, I'll take a video of that when I get home because I find that kind of hilarious. I don't know why they just didn't make it all black. I'm driving through a neighborhood right now. I have no idea where I'm going. I just know my house is that way. I just want to get back to the main road and being an adult male, I'm not gonna look up directions and I'm not gonna turn around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna annoy these nice people in their nice quiet neighborhood. They're all looking at me. There's a lot of people here. <laughs> Everybody's walking. So many people. And here I am in my loud station wagon. Disrupting their peaceful walks. Here I am still lost in suburbia. I might actually have to pull out my phone and look up directions because... You guys, I found the road. We're safe. Here we go. Ooh. Did not like that one-two shift. I'm hoping that's the exhaust hitting something and not the transmission uh, hitting something on the inside. I don't know what I'm going to do with this car yet. I do know that I, I want to swap motor. I just don't know with what. This is definitely a future project car. It's going to sit to the side until we finish up the BMW X5, which now that's getting warmer, we're going to start working on that. Finally, um, I would like to thank most of my subscribers are here for the X5 and not listen to me talk about doing clutches, changing windshields, and getting more junk cars. So we will get back to that. We won't be doing the V12 like I originally was talking about and the whole reason why I bought that 7 Series. But we will be putting a motor in there and it will only be rear wheel drive and I haven't quite decided yet if it's going to be a manual or an automatic. I have an automatic for it, but I think shifting gears and the X5 would be a lot of fun. So maybe I can find a good deal on a manual transmission. So guys, stay tuned for that. So there you have it. Free station wagon. Don't know what I'm going to do with it. Don't need another car. But here at Financial Mistakes, it's what I do. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the X X5 right here. Guys, thanks for watching. Keep making financial mistakes.